Star Trek the original series is loved by countless old school Trek fans and new fans alike, but even they would admit that about 50-55% to 55 of the original series episodes were good and the rest, uh, not so good? Today I'm going to count down my top 10 favorite Star Trek original series episodes. These are my personal favorites, so be sure to tell me yours in the comments below, and remember to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss a video. Now let's begin. Number 10 Let's start things off with an absolute classic that has been referenced probably the most in later series than in any other original series episode. The Trouble with Tribbles takes place on a neutral starbase that both the Federation and the Klingon Empire want. Captain Kirk is told his top priority is to protect this special grain as it's the only grain that can grow on the nearby planet. Kirk feels this is a pretty menial task for him and his crew, and a large part of his crew are given some free time to hang out on the station. This includes Uhura, who is convinced by a snake oil salesman-like character to buy a cute fluffy creature known as a Tribble. Uhura brings the Tribble aboard where it begins to infinitely multiply and causes all kinds of problems on the Enterprise. Meanwhile, Scotty and some of his crew end up getting hassled by some Klingons until a bar fight breaks out. One thing leads to another and the Tribbles end up eating all of the rare grain Kirk was supposed to protect, but the Tribbles also help to determine the cause of the station's problems, so everything works out in the end. I love this episode because it's a nice slice of life episode where you get to see the crew just hanging out in a less tense situation than you'd normally see. It's a great little episode that deserves its place at number 10 on the list. Number 9 This next great episode starts off at a 1960s airbase where a UFO is first spotted in the sky. The UFO, strangely enough, is our very own USS Enterprise. How did this happen? An incident occurred where the Enterprise was being pulled into a black star and their only means of escape was to go full speed in reverse, which flung them at unimaginable speeds once they broke free of the star's gravity. This speed is what ended up rocketing them into the past, coincidentally near Earth. I love this episode and how it makes you wonder if many of the UFOs that had been spotted were actually just a futuristic human vessel purposely or accidentally sent to the past. After the Air Force launches fighters to investigate, one of their pilots ends up aboard the Enterprise. The debate then begins on whether or not it would be okay to keep this pilot when they head back to the future, or if they should leave him behind in his own time. The plot splits two ways, with the away team trying to remove proof of them being there, and the crew on board showing the pilot around whilst deciding his fate. Tomorrow is Yesterday is one of my favorites because of how it makes you think about what you know or at least think you may know about UFOs. It also shows what the protocol would be for Starfleet in an odd situation like this. Some of you may recognize this episode's concept as it was reused in a great episode of Futurama where Fry accidentally becomes his own grandpa. For expanding our curiosity and being an inspiration for one of my favorite Futurama episodes whilst also telling a great story, Tomorrow is Yesterday is my ninth favorite episode of Star Trek the Original Series. Number 8 The Enterprise is on a mission to escort a Federation diplomat to a relatively unknown planet when they are given the order to leave the planet's space and not return. Captain Kirk and the gang know this is a serious order and attempt to leave, but the diplomat tells them that his mission to establish diplomatic relations is far more important than the Enterprise and its crew, which is a running theme of this episode. Kirk and a small team beam down to make sure it's safe, only to find out that this planet's civilizations have been at war with each other for over 500 years. After an attack is made by the enemy, but there's no signs of explosions or weaponry, Kirk gets curious as to what's going on, then finds out that the entire war is done through a computer simulation, and the casualties must report to suicide machines on each side. Seeing how obviously messed up this is, the Enterprise crew do everything in their power to put an end to it, whilst the people of the planet claim that the Enterprise and its crew were among the casualties, according to the simulation, and are all ordered to be killed. Kirk and the crew decide to threaten the people with real warfare and destroy their simulation and suicide devices, forcing them to either deal with the war firsthand or come to some sort of peaceful resolution. 
Since they had made war into not much more than a game, when forced to fight their own battles, the people decide to invoke talks of peace for the first time in 500 years. This was such a great episode, with many little twists and turns, it showed how strong each of the main characters of the show really could be, as they all worked to their strengths to resolve this seemingly impossible situation together. It also acts as a lesson to the politicians who send their own countries to war, without any real risk to themselves. Number 7 This episode starts off with Spock captaining the bridge with Sulu and the young Lieutenant Bailey at his side. They encounter a cube-shaped beach ball that exudes radiation at an increasing rate, all while Captain Kirk is in McCoy's sick bay completing his physical exam. Once Kirk is briefed on the situation, Spock recommends they not turn tail for fear that this could make them look weak, something you don't really want to portray in a first contact situation. Lieutenant Bailey, without orders, tries to launch an attack and is quickly reprimanded by Kirk for trying to take matters into his own hands. Throughout the episode, you can see the tension in the young lieutenant, as he's clearly afraid of the object and continues to panic but is trying to appear as the tough guy. This clashes in contrast with the main cast as they are more seasoned and experienced in these kinds of matters. After trying a number of peaceful and evasive options, Captain Kirk finally gives the order to fire. Lieutenant Bailey, who is visibly shook up, takes a minute to ground himself before firing and destroying the object. Once the object's destroyed, a smaller object appears, and the life form gives them 10 minutes to pray to their gods before it destroys the ship. Kirk reassures the crew that anyone advanced enough to travel space is advanced enough to understand that they come in peace. When they finally get a look at the creature in command of this massive object, Bailey starts freaking out and yelling at the bridge crew, so Kirk relieves him from duty. Spock relates their situation to chess, but both him and Kirk are aware that it's not chess that's the answer, but poker. Kirk begins an elaborate plan to bluff the creature into believing that the Enterprise is loaded up with the material known as Corbomite, which when fired upon has a 100% chance of destroying whatever or whoever fired upon them. The alien takes the Enterprise into custody and while fighting its tractor beam, the Enterprise is able to disable the vessel's power systems, including its life support. Kirk gives the order to help the alien. He also brings Bailey along so he can experience his first first contact. Once they beam aboard, they find that they too have been bluffed as the alien shows its true appearance and they all share a drink as he explains his true motives. The Corbomite Maneuver is a great early episode that showcases what it takes to be a Starfleet officer, as well as the many different ways that first contact can go. It shows us how the crew reacts under pressure and how they can handle these tense situations when they put their minds and assets together. Number 6 After failing to negotiate access to dilithium with an alien world, Kirk, McCoy, Uhura, and Scotty attempt to beam back to the Enterprise during a terrible storm. Once beamed to the ship, they realize that something is incredibly wrong. They're still on the Enterprise, but not as they knew it. They have unknowingly been transported to the Mirror Universe, where the Terran Empire rules in place of the Federation, and everyone is at each other's throats for promotion. The away team quickly realizes they must find a way back to their own universe and until then have to interact with the barbaric crew of this universe's enterprise. Trying to avoid suspicion from the goatee bearing evil Spock and his crew is no easy task. But with Ahura's help and the help of the Mirror Universe Kirk's girlfriend, they're able to mostly pull it off. Once they figure out a way to return home, they're encountered by evil Spock and they have to team up to take him out. Having a small window of time to get back, McCoy insists on giving Evil Spock medical attention, preventing his death but cutting things close on their journey home. Once they reach the transporter bay, they realize one person will have to remain behind to operate the transporters. Mira Kirk's girlfriend asks that they take her with them, but due to the limit of people who can be transported back to the Prime Universe, and the fact that she can only be swapped with her own self, who must be beaming aboard at the same time, it is impossible to bring her along. Evil Spock then enters the room and decides to help them out. Kirk lectures him on how it's up to him and his crew to try and change this universe for the better, and the away team is sent back to their own universe. The episode ends with a girl who has been newly transferred to the Enterprise running into Kirk on the bridge. Turns out, she was his girlfriend in the Mirror Universe. All in all, this was a fantastic episode that gives you an alternate take on the Star Trek universe. The Mirror Universe is explored a few times by other series, but this is the episode that introduced it. Mirror Mirror does an excellent job of piquing our curiosity and wanting to know more about this other strange universe. Number 5 
A mock time is the ultimate story of friendship. Spock, a Vulcan who until this point has acted only on logic, begins to go mad aboard the Enterprise. Kirk, concerned for his safety, orders him to get checked out by Dr. McCoy, who determines if Spock isn't taken to Vulcan ASAP, he will die. Vulcans basically go into heat and must mate with their bride within a small period of time when this so-called Pond Far begins. Kirk disobeys a direct order from Starfleet Command and risks his career to change course for Vulcan in order to save his best friend. Spock, who has always claimed that emotions such as friendship are below him, requests for both Kirk and McCoy to go down to the surface with him to attend the ceremony. Unfortunately for all of them, the Ponfar ceremony involves a battle to the death, and Spock's absolute babe of a bride requests a battle between Spock and Kirk. Kirk is then thrust unknowingly into the ultimate battle with his best friend in the greatest display of bros before hoes. McCoy is forced to watch from the sidelines as his two best friends are forced to fight to the death. He does what he can medically to give Kirk a fair shake, but in the end it's no use as Vulcans are much stronger than humans and Spock is still in his heated rage. Spock chokes Kirk unconscious before immediately realizing what he has done. A man who spent his entire life hiding his emotions is crushed by the death of his best friend at his own hands and becomes the new captain of the Enterprise. Turns out Spock's bride was an absolute biatch who wanted to bang this Ston dude instead and this was logically the best way to end up with him. Thankfully, the medication McCoy gave Kirk actually just paralyzed him to mimic death. The look of absolute joy on Spock's face when he realizes his best friend is still alive is an iconic moment in the franchise. Spock, the man who never shows emotion for a split second, was absolutely ecstatic. And of course, McCoy can't let it down and rips on him as all great friends do. Amok Time is a great episode that shows exactly how close these three have grown, and does a great job of showing us more of the mysterious Vulcans and their culture. Number 4 This episode starts off with a bunch of miners getting killed by an unknown entity, and the Enterprise is sent to help out with the investigation. Once it's determined that there's some sort of unknown life form burning tunnels into the mines and killing the workers, Spock correlates these giant purple silicone based orbs to the possible attacks. The life form destroys some vital components, and the clock begins to tick as Kirk and Spock begin the mission to find and kill this unknown creature. The miners want revenge for their fallen comrades and are happy to help kill it, but it turns out phasers have little to no effect on it. Spock is intent on wanting to capture it against Kirk's direct orders, but once Kirk ends up trapped in a cave-in with the creature, he notices that it doesn't attack him and it's injured. Spock, concerned for Kirk, changes his mind and wants it killed, but after doing some mind melds, it turns out the Horta, as it's known, is only protecting its eggs. The miners have been unknowingly killing its babies, and it is the last surviving Horta until the eggs hatch. The episode does a great job of showing the duality of Kirk and Spock. They both have a different approach to situations, but it's these differences in their character that not only makes things interesting, but helps them work out problems instead of just trying things one way or arguing. The moral of the story is, despite the urge to fear the unknown, sometimes we are the ones doing the harm. And the thing we fear is only doing what's right in its eyes. It's also a lesson to take in opinions that differ from your own, for it's the only way to learn different outlooks and together you can both improve. We're all a product of our own experiences, but we shouldn't let that blind us to the truth and the hunt for it. Number 3 The City on the Edge of Forever is widely considered by most to be the best original series episode, and it is damn good. It starts off with the Enterprise experience some turbulence as they pass through some anomalous time ripples. Dr. McCoy accidentally injects himself with a high dosage of a drug, which makes him go mad, and he escapes and beams down to the nearby planet. On the planet, they find this mysterious archway that begins to speak to them. The archway is known as the Guardian of Forever, and has the ability to open portals in space and time. As it demonstrates this, McCoy in his berserk state runs through the portal, and it's up to Kirk and Spock to go after him and try to bring him back. They are then transported to 1930s New York where they must locate Dr. McCoy and find a way back without interfering with the timeline. Spock wears a toque to cover up his ears and they thankfully run into a kind woman who runs a homeless shelter. She puts them up in an apartment and gives them a job to make ends meet while Spock works on a device using archaic technology and supplies. Kirk and Spock do their best to help the lady run the homeless shelter as thanks, but it eventually becomes clear that she must die in order for the timeline to remain intact. 
They don't know how and they don't know when, but eventually this woman that Kirk is falling in love with must die. Some time passes and Spock gets the resources he needs, but all is lost as the device he's building catches fire. Shortly after, McCoy appears and the lady finds and takes him in as well. She nurses him back to health and they too begin to develop a relationship. Which is unfortunate because the exact night Kirk learns of McCoy and his whereabouts is the night when the lady gets struck by a speeding car. Kirk does everything he can to fight his instinct to save her, and even prevents McCoy from saving her. This absolutely crushes the men, who are then transported back through the Guardian of Forever to their own time and place. A great but sad episode where we see how resourceful Spock can be, and how Kirk can always do what must be done, no matter the personal cost. Number 2 The entirety of Balance of Terror features a tense face-off with the Romulans after almost a century of not encountering them. They were once at war, but the Romulan ship has been spotted on the Federation side of the neutral zone and has attacked and destroyed multiple Federation bases. Captain Kirk and the Enterprise and the Romulans in their warbird, called a Bird of Prey at the time, teeter on the cusp of setting off another interstellar war between their two factions. At first, the Romulans wanted to trigger a war, and Captain Kirk wanted to avoid it at all cost, appeasing the Romulans and allowing them to destroy another starbase. But as time goes on, neither party wants to show weakness in the face of their enemy, and the Enterprise and Warbird face off in an intense strategical battle to avoid war while showing that they're both capable of holding their own. This episode contains two of the most powerful moments in all of the original series. When the Romulan leader decides to self-destruct instead of allowing his crew be beamed aboard the Enterprise, he mentions how in different lives or circumstances, Kirk and himself could have been friends, and mentions how he saw him as a great formidable foe and felt little shame in losing to someone as tactful as him. The second moment being at the very end of the episode, when the only casualty on the Enterprise was a young man who was to be wed at the start of the episode. Kirk meets the man's bride-to-be at the altar alone, and attempts to comfort her, to which she replies, I'm alright, and leaves the room. The camera then zooms in closely to Kirk's face, and his expression is that of a man in command, absolutely crushed, saying, But I am not. And the credits roll as he sorrowfully walks through the halls of his ship. Balance of Terror is just such a powerful episode. It's the first appearance of my favorite Star Trek species, the Romulans, and does such a great job of building the tension while showing how much of a tactical genius Kirk really is. For these reasons and more, Balance of Terror is my second favorite Star Trek original series episode of all time. Number 1 This is one of the few episodes that starts off with enough tension to initiate Red Alert almost right from the get-go. The Enterprise reaches a system that's missing most of its planets, and they see the USS Constellation adrift in space. Kirk and an away team beam aboard to find Commodore Matt Decker alone, completely in shock. When Decker finally comes to, he tells the team that his crew beamed down to the third planet to get to safety, to which Kirk replies, but there is no third planet. Decker states that he is aware of this. There was a third planet, but not anymore. What they're dealing with is a planet-devouring doomsday machine, an automated device that goes from system to system, destroying and devouring every planet in its path. I love this episode so much, because it truly is the greatest threat that the Enterprise and its crew are faced with. For you non-Trek fans, think of it like a massive automated Death Star, going from planet to planet, devouring all in its path. Not only are they having to deal with the Doomsday Machine itself, but Commodore Decker forcefully takes command of the Enterprise while Kirk is trying to get the Constellation back up and running. It's not just a battle of man versus planet killer, but also man versus man. Decker wants revenge for the loss of his crew and forces the crew of the Enterprise to attempt to destroy the machine, despite everyone on the bridge telling him it's impossible. Spock, as intelligent as he is, is also a stickler for the rules, and after attempting to stay in command, turns command over to Decker, as he is the superior ranking officer. You really get to see all the main cast at their best here, 
Dr. McCoy questions both Spock and Decker's decisions and comes up with ways to remove Decker from the command. Spock has to deal with his decision to follow orders and put his ship and crew at risk. Sulu reluctantly follows orders that could kill him and his crew, and Scotty does everything he can to get the constellation going in order for himself and Kirk to not only figure out what the heck is going on outside the ship, but to also come up with a plan to destroy the Doomsday Machine. The city on the edge of forever is amazing for its storytelling and repercussions, Balance of Terror is incredible for its tension and strategy, but I honestly feel like the Doomsday Machine has it all. This really shows how someone like Kirk and his crew are able to beat the odds no matter how impossible they may seem. For that and so much more, the Doomsday Machine is my favorite episode of Star Trek The Original Series. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll get to a few honorable mentions, but if you enjoyed the video please help me out by liking and subscribing. The first honorable mention has to be Space Seed. Space Seed introduced one of the most iconic Star Trek villains of all time, Khan Nudian Singh. They find his sleeper ship adrift in space and unknowingly awaken a superhuman warlord and his crew. This episode is mandatory viewing if you want to watch the Star Trek movies. The last episode I'll mention is The Squire of Gothos. The original series had so many episodes where they would land on a planet that was ruled by godlike beings. In my opinion, The Squire of Gothos is the best of those. The crew meets up with Trelane, who is a huge fan of humanity's warring history. It's up to Kirk and the gang to show him the error of his ways in order to make their escape to safety. Trelane is a pretty good character, and it's hinted at in some of the Star Trek novels that he was actually a member of the Q Continuum. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this look at my favorite Star Trek original series episodes, and I hope you'll check out some of my other top 5 and top 10 videos as well. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.